Hello and welcome to Tech Baffle. James Otif here, and today we're looking at the Dell Inspiron 14 2 in 1 laptop. So I've got it in Titan Grey, I'll put the links in the description. So it features a 14 inch Full HD touch display with webcam for performance as the latest 11th generation Intel Core i5 processor. 8 gigs of memory, 255 gigabytes of solid state drive storage, and it also features integrated Intel Iris XE graphics. This is a new feature for the 11th generation Intel processors. So in terms of the OS, it has Windows 10. It includes wireless AX plus Bluetooth, a free cell 40 watt hour battery, plus Waves Max Audio Pro. Let's go ahead and open it up. Hooray. So let's have a look what's inside. So at the top of the package we have the UK power adapter and the Dell 45 watt power supply. Now this is really nice and compact. And here is the laptop itself, the Dell Inspiron 14 5000 2 in 1 user guide. So this is just a quick start guide. This is what we've been waiting for. And here we have it. Now it's very nice and light. The top is metal and the bottom is plastic. Feels very nice and sturdy, has some good quality hinges because remember this is a two-in-one version so the hinges will need to be quite strong and flexible. Very nice understated Dell appearance. Like I said this metal really brings out the quality. So let's go ahead and open it up. There's not like a gap for your finger so there we go. Do -do 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 -do. And there you go. As you can see, as a glass touch screen, the palm rest is actually metal, which is nice to see. So you can use your laptop like this, like a normal person, or if you're feeling adventurous, you can actually fold it around. So the hinge goes right the way around. So you can actually have it like a tent. So you can use it to watch Netflix. It also makes it quite nice and sturdy if you're tapping it. I think it folds. Yeah, it actually folds completely flat. So if you wanted to use it as a tablet, you could actually use it as a large tablet. What happens is that the hinge mechanism, when you fold the screen back, it actually raises the keyboard a bit, making it a bit more comfortable to type. So yeah, very nicely well presented keyboard. Doesn't have a numeric keypad, which I actually prefer because it means the keys are actually more in the center. And a huge trackpad, which is nice to see. I like big trackpads and it feels really nice and smooth as well. It's also worth mentioning, it's actually extremely thin. So in terms of the IO, we have the charging connector, a full size HDMI port, a USB 3 port and USB-C. And then on the other side, we have a full size SD card slot, another USB 3 port, a headphone jack. So this will work fine if you've got some earphones with an integrated microphone and a Kensington lock. Very nice IO. So as the Intel Core i5 processor, this is the 11th gen with the Iris XE graphics. So let's go ahead and switch it on. There we go. Yeah, the screen is quite reflective. So I've got it a little bit off angle just so that the light doesn't reflect on the screen. Hi there, I'm Cortana and I'm here to help. Hi Cortana, keyboard feels nice and tactile, very similar to a Dell laptop that I had before actually. And there we go, we have our Windows 10 desktop ready to go. As you can see, it has a very nice screen to body ratio. Obviously it has a little bit of a chin for the electronics for the touchscreen, but as you can tell, it has a very nice display. So by default, it has it set to 150%. So this is a full HD 1920 by 1080p display. As it's a 14 inch display, you probably do want it scaled. However, if you wanted your full screen real estate, by all means, you can go and set it to either 125 or <laughs> as you can see, 100%. Do you know what? If you've got good eyesight, you can <laughs> get loads of screen space. It's actually nice having it scaled up a bit because the text just looks a little bit smooth around the edges. Okay, what's going on here? My Dell. Welcome James. Hello. Thanks for choosing Dell. This is My Dell. This app is a one-stop shop for everything related to your Inspiron. I like this sort of smoky effect in the background. That's quite cool. Ugh. Dell recommends McAfee and device to keep you safe. Yeah, it comes with a 30 day trial, but you can extend it to a one year McAfee life safe subscription. And there we go. We have the Tech Baffle YouTube channel. It's a really nice, vibrant IPS full HD display. So yeah, it's really nice watching YouTube. 
The first thing you notice is how incredibly light it is. It is very light indeed, meaning you can travel it around and not worry about it being clunky. It's also nice and thin, even though it's got plenty of connectivity. Unfortunately, the screen is quite difficult to see outside. This is actually on full brightness, which is a little bit of a shame. It's still visible, but you have to have it on full brightness. And if you're sitting in direct sunlight, you will have to bear in mind, you probably would want to sit in the shade. Sit, good boy. So the keyboard works nicely and it's nicely spaced. Keys have a decent amount of travel, not too bad actually. I mean, it is a chiclet keyboard. It is a flat laptop keyboard. I have been happily typing using this laptop without any issues. Another welcome addition is the large trackpad. If you look at that, it's just really nice and easy to use. It's nice and smooth. I've launched up CPU Z and GPU Z. It's an 11th gen Intel Core i5 1135G7 at 2.4 gigahertz. So it has four cores and eight threads. In terms of memory, we have eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory, Intel Iris XE graphics. And then on GPU Z, it shows us a bit more about the XE graphics. So the Intel Iris XE graphics, Tiger Lake GT2. It says memory type DDR4 memory size not available. It's an integrated graphics chip. It's not a uh, separate graphics card or anything. It's worth noting when logging in, it doesn't have Microsoft Hello. So you all have to use either a pin or some sort of password. This is the typing experience on the Dell Inspiration. Inspiron 5000. The keyboard experience is actually quite nice. Typed on quite a few things for my work and I've used this keyboard quite a lot and it's provided a really nice typing experience. Okay, so yeah, PowerPoint works very well so you could have a really important presentation like acceptable pizzas. Only 20% of people think that Hawaiian is acceptable. Let me know if you're a Hawaiian pizza fan. I am. Microsoft Office works absolutely fine, no problem. Okay, so let's try something a bit more challenging. Uh, let's go to Premiere Pro. So I've just loaded up one of the Tech Baffle videos onto an SD card. So the SD card reader is at the side, like so. Now, that's uh, not particularly great. I don't like the fact that the SD card just sort of hangs out like that. It is, it works, I guess, but I prefer the sort of spring-loaded ones, especially if you could probably knock that and accidentally break your SD card. It's worth noting when the screen is scaled like this, there's not a whole lot of space to work with. Change this down to 100. Now things might be a bit more difficult to read. Now things are a little bit easier to work with, especially when video editing. Okay, so let's see if this video plays. This is a 4K video project on Premiere Pro. Good fun. So, let's go ahead and open the box. Yeah, full quality is a no-go. I'm gonna go straight to one-eighth quality. <laughs> Let's see if this works. In fact, they do look exactly the same. I don't know what all the green stuff's all about. I was expecting it to lag a bit, but it's glitching, it's going all green. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think this is gonna be the machine you're looking for if you're doing some heavy video editing. So when you're in touchscreen mode, it brings up the on-screen keyboard, which is quite nice and easy to type on. So basically with the touchscreen, you have a few extra controls. So you, you can obviously scroll down the page like you would do on a phone. You can pinch and zoom. So if you want to read something, you can pinch and zoom so you can see what you're looking at a bit easier. If you want to bring up all your applications, you just swipe from the left and you can select which application you want to use. If you swipe from the right, then it brings you the notifications. So if you want to go back to the previous page, you just swipe until you see the little arrow and then it'll go to the previous page. If you want to go forward, you can just do the same thing. And what you all have to do is just wait. So you scroll and it won't do it automatically until this little icon goes blue. And then once you let go, it will work. So you do have to scroll a fair way for it to actually work. So you're not gonna hit it accidentally. So that's nice to use. So the touch screen is actually quite easy to use. I was thinking it might be a bit fiddly because desktop websites like this aren't really optimized for touch screen, but I'm finding it's not actually that difficult to use at all. And if you have any difficulty, you can actually scale the screen up to 175%, which will enable a bit more of a user-friendly layout. Everything's just a bit more scaled up and the buttons are a bit bigger. If you wanna copy and paste some text, you just hold down like so, and it'll bring up the selection like this. And then once you're ready, you can go and press copy. By all means, you don't have to use it in this form. You can either use it flat like this. It's almost like a giant tablet. You can even use the touchscreen as the normal laptop layout. So the hinge is actually pretty good. 
it's quite nice and solid the hinge it doesn't sort of accidentally knock back too easy so yeah with this touch screen you can get really creative and do something really wacky like this but obviously you could create something far better than this i'm not judging that <laughs> but it's just good fun if you are really into your sort of digital art you can create something really cool with the touch screen i'm not sure whether it would actually replace a dedicated drawing tablet however if you want to do a bit of digital art this touch screen is a nice big size and it's really nice and responsive as well in terms of the webcam this laptop includes a 720p webcam i'm also using the built-in microphone on the laptop so you should be able to hear what it sounds like it's very sunny today <laughs> Certain bright areas can struggle a little bit. It's nothing that's going to blow you away or anything. However, if you're just doing a simple Zoom call or Skype or anything like that, it should be more than acceptable. What I want to show you is this cool little feature at the top here. So say if you are wanting some privacy and you just don't want to be watched, you can activate this privacy filter. So you just slide this switch here and there you go. Okay, so let's see what the Dell Inspiron 14 5000 can do in terms of gaming so i've got gta 5 right here let's go ahead and play okay so let's start off at 1080p yeah everything's set to normal i don't expect too much i mean i don't even know if i can actually play the game <laughs> it may not work at all who knows so okay yeah, i'm playing it with the trackpad which isn't ideal oh okay okay it's not looking too bad i mean we are in like a busy city there's lots of stuff going on so i mean it's 25 fps i mean Oh, it's not great, but it's better than I was expecting, that's for sure. Yeah, when there's not much going on, it goes into the almost 30s, 29. <laughs> I mean, it generally works all right. There. Occasionally, it does freeze a bit. This is a fancy-looking vehicle. Doo -ba -doo -doo -doo. Leave me the car, dog. <laughs> Whoa, and we're off. So yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Let's switch over. 720p same normal settings everything else 720p okay so let's see how it runs in 720p it doesn't look too bad in 720p especially on this sort of screen size so i'm not really complaining okay look at the fps now it's starting to look a bit better now okay we're running in the 30s in 720p normal settings we're in the city it's raining at the moment so there's lots of stuff going on and uh yeah i mean i'm quite impressed with this because considering this is intel integrated graphics this is the unsafe way to cross the road. <laughs> yeah, definitely you notice the difference between 720p, 1080p. Can we uh, borrow your car? <laughs> okay, I'm failing here so badly. And yeah, that's GTA 5. Okay, so Fortnite is now installed. So let's go ahead and launch it. Okay, so we're launched in Fortnite and 1920 by 1080. So we got view distance medium, textures medium, and meshes on low. Now I'll let you into a bit of a secret. I've never played Fortnite before, so this should be exciting. Oh, damn it. Wait a minute. I don't have fraps open. I don't have fraps open. <laughs> okay, so we're running 20 odd, 30 odd, all that kind of stuff. Okay, we're loading sort of 30, 30 odd FPS. Ugh. You may have gathered that I'm not very good at gaming. Okay, so, we're in 720p now. Well, let's go ahead and play. Okay, so we're in 720p, and quite frankly, the frame rate's not looking particularly great at the moment. Yeah, it's not really looking a whole lot different to 1080p. That's surprising. Apologies, again, you're probably cringing and thinking, what earth am I doing? I mean, it works fairly well. I mean, look at the... It occasionally freezes, but, I mean, at the moment, not too bad. Not too bad. Headshot. <laughs> this is terrible to play on the trackpad. In fact, you can't play this on the trackpad because you can't press two buttons at once. Oh no, that's not, that, you don't look very fair. Oh no, we're gonna die. So that is Fortnite. Not the most steadiest of gameplay in the world, but better than I was expecting. We are playing with integrated graphics right here, so <laughs> you can't expect too much. You can actually expand the RAM in this laptop. There's actually another slot that you can put another 8 gigs of RAM in. Next up is a sound test using my binaural ears. Yes, it's literally a microphone with ears. Please wear headphones for the full effect. I could feel it in my bones. I'm gonna buy no 
The speakers are alright, a bit muffled, not much bass. For watching YouTube it's fine, but for music I'd recommend headphones or a set of speakers. The Dell Inspon 14 5000 laptop provides a great performance in a slim package. It's equipped with Windows 10 Home, with a free upgrade to Windows 11. The 14 inch Full HD touchscreen adds extra versatility, whilst not being the brightest outdoors. The large trackpad and well presented keyboard are very nice to use, great for productivity. The touchscreen isn't a graphics tablet, but works well for basic art in Adobe Illustrator. The Intel Iris Xe graphics are a welcome addition, but only for entry level gaming. For Microsoft 365, Photoshop and web browsing this laptop is nice and snappy. The boot up is also fast. You can easily get 5 hours of battery life on the go. The speakers are good, but not too exciting. If you're wondering why headphones sound a bit strange, it's because of Max Audio Pro. Whilst you can customise your sound, I don't like how it enables audio effects by default. Go ahead and disable it for a more natural sound. If you're looking for lightweight productivity with a sleek design, the Dell Inspon 14 is an awesome choice. Overall, the Dell Inspon 14 5000 2-in-1 laptop gets a tech battle rating of 4 out of 5. You can buy this on Amazon. Choose from the 11th gen Intel i3, i5 or i7 CPU. Check the tech battle links in the description. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button if you want any more of this sort of thing. Don't forget to subscribe and ding. So you don't miss a thing, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and TikTok. Follow me at TechBaffle. For the latest head over to TechBaffle.com. Thanks for watching and have a baffling day.